This is the Tiger Moth Camper Tour from Tax Outdoors. Within this episode, I'm gonna share three things that I like about this trailer, but also three things I think can be improved. I'll also share with you five other campers that are similar to this in the market, but different budgets and different features overall, just to give you a better understanding of what's out there. This habitat that we make is called the Tiger Moth. It, it fits two adults. The inside is the equivalent of a full-size bed. But basically with a tiger moth, the intention is that all your feature functionality activity is all outside. So if you look at the back here, we have an awning that deploys overhead over the back to cover you up while you utilize your kitchen drawer. So this drawer pulls out from the back when it's shoved into the unit, it stores underneath the driver side half of the bed. The pull-out kitchen is probably the most prominent feature on the Tiger Moth. It's unique to all of our trailers. It's the only one that has it. Um, basically, once you pull the kitchen all the way out, you've got organizational storage in front of you. You take the cover that was in place and held in with this bungee and latch it on to the side of the drawer here. And that gives you an extra surface for your stove, any other things, and still allows you to reach in and get to your food, your utensils, your knives, whatever you may have while you're cooking. We also have this other section of the drawer here that has a cutting board surface. So that way you can cut your vegetables and your fruit and your meat up here if you want to. And this drawer does not have any organizational storage in it. It's just deep, so that way it can hold your pots and your larger items. The Tiger Moth is very simple um, in terms of feature functionality. It doesn't have any running water, no plumbing, uh, no heating system. So since there is no running water, we wanted to give people a water supply. So while you're cooking, we have a five gallon jerry can on this mount on the back that can give you some fresh water for washing hands or filling up pots, whatever you need to do. One of the best parts about the Tiger Moss design is it's open feel. A lot of people will comment to you that when they're looking at maybe coming from tent camping and graduating to a trailer, they don't like the idea of being closed off and not being able to kind of feel like they're being outside. So you can see here with the Tiger Moth, the back door opens as well as this side door, going door here. So the whole side and whole back of the trailer are open to the elements in the air. We have a screen door here that's pretty simple design. It just affixes to the interior perimeter of each opening with uh, Velcro strips. So you can apply it very easily from inside. And the one on the back here rolls up so that way you can easily get in and out whenever you're doing your different things during the day coming in and out of the trailer. We also have multiple holes and attachment points here so that when you're using this gull wing door open and you have it as a cover, you can hang lanterns from here at nighttime. Uh, you can bungee things up there, just whatever you want. Uh, part of our design, if you look around, you can see slots, grooves everywhere is we want people to get creative with how they bungee things and attach things. And basically the whole trailer is kind of like a blank canvas. You can use it for whatever you see fit. On the front of the Tiger Moth here, we have a roof deck that holds a couple hundred pounds. As you can see, there's multiple attachment points again, like we mentioned earlier, so that way you can tie things down, get creative with how you wanna haul things and store things. Same thing with the cargo deck here on the front of the tongue. We have purposely left space between the front panel here and the toolbox um, with a 12 volt plug. Our idea there is that if you wanna run a 12 volt cooler while you're camping, this is a great place to put it once you get to where you're going. Most people will typically keep their 12 volt cooler on the inside of the trailer while they're towing. Then once they get to their campsite, they'll drop it here, plug it in and run it off their 12 volt batteries. The tongue box on the front is a great place to keep your wheel chocks, your extension cords, uh, your leveling blocks, any other kind of things that you may have like that for towing. Um, again, with the Overland model here, we've got the same hitch that you saw on the Mantis. It's the articulating lock and roll hitch. The Tiger Moth doesn't have any water, any plumbing. It's very simple habitat, but you do have the option to power your batteries, charge them up by a shore power connection. This will also run all your lights, your 12 volt plugs, your USB ports on the inside. And then if you're off grid, you can plug in a small solar panel to the outlet here, or inlet, I'm sorry, to, uh, to keep your batteries charged. Up top, we've got load bars, same load bars that are on the Mantis, same tracks and actually the same rooftop tent that we use on the Mantis can also be applied to the Tiger Moth. The way that works is this little 
cargo deck here has holes pre-drilled in it that are ready to accept these Thule uh, load bar podium feet. So you just take the podium feet off of the track, you install them into the top of the deck here, and you take the remaining bar that's left in the track, slide it all the way forward, and that creates your level base for mounting your rooftop tent. Another simple part of the design, but big functionality, is we have wide fenders on the Tiger Moth. We know that people are gonna be doing a lot of stuff uh, on it. So basically, there's a water bottle right here. The intention is that you can climb on the fenders and move around easily. They hold weight. Uh, the fender also can double as a seat, so holds multiple purposes there. <laughs> Optional feature that we have on the Tiger Moth that's very popular is a propane tank. So a lot of people who camp are with camp stoves are very familiar with how your little Coleman butane tank runs out almost instantly when you start using it. So to combat that, we've given people the option to add a five pound propane tank to their setup that gives you more fuel, more staying power when you're cooking. It sits in this proprietary mount that we've built here. It straps onto the fender so that while, way while you're towing and going, your tank has a place to live. The Tiger Moth interior is pretty simple at the end of the day. There's not a lot to it. To start with, on the back here, we've got some switches overhead that turn on various LED lights throughout the trailer. We've got one that runs through the top of the main part of the bed area here, and we've got one that lights up the back, and then we've got another one that does a night light for you. It's an infrared ground light, so that way you're not full white light while you're trying to sleep, but you can still see if you have to get out of the trailer. Um, another important feature that I think is very underrated is we have this little vent fan here that runs off of the 12 volt power. It just keeps the air flowing in here um, and kind of sucks the hot air out when if it's on the warmer day and, and keeps it comfortable. It's really nice. Um, this little table that I'm sitting at, uh, I like to use this for snacks, uh, lunch and dinner, kind of keep it this way in the daytime. And then at nighttime, when you're ready to go to bed, um, it's very similar to the Mantis. The, tabletop uh, or post unscrews from the base on the ground here and the bed that I'm or the couch that I'm sitting on moves this way all the way out and that will make out the lower half of your bed here. Another great part about the Tiger Moth is there's plenty of storage underneath the bed here. You can see that we've got a pretty large bag under there. So lots of open storage under the front port of the bed here in the Tiger Moth. It can fit quite a bit of gear. Also, this gives you visibility to the battery box I was talking about earlier. Uh, you can hold two Group 27 size deep cycle marine batteries in there, run them parallel. Generally with two batteries, you can get about five, six days of 12 volt power off the charge alone. And then if you plug a solar panel into that, it'll keep you going indefinitely. We've got basically the equivalent of a headboard with a cup holder built into it. This is a great place to keep some books, your cell phone, whatever you're gonna use in bed at nighttime. We've got a 12 volt plug here for any kind of little appliance or 12 volt item. We've got a USB port for charging your cell phone. And then this right here is a set of 120 volt plugs in the event you're able to plug into shore power. You can run some larger ticket items there. A lot of people, since the Tiger Moth doesn't have a heater, will plug in a little space heater into the 120 whenever they have access to shore power. If you don't, a very popular option is one of the little propane burns clean that's called a My Buddy heater. Uh, a lot of people like those. This right here is the converter. It's the equivalent of the circuit breaker on your house. It just regulates the shore power coming in from the outside and um, makes sure that your battery doesn't overcharge and also converts the power down to 12 volt power. Um, one of the optional features in the Tiger Moth, this window right here can be replaced with an air conditioner. So if you camp in a hot climate, you can add a window AC right here to keep you cool at nighttime while you're trying to sleep. What about the head height here? How much are we talking? Do you know how many inches this is? Yeah, um, this is, uh, it's four feet one. I have it on my phone. So if you were standing here to change clothes, what would that look like? Can you show me like, oh, like ducked you are? Yeah, it kind, kind of gives people a good yeah. idea. So you can't see it right now um, without the bed being deployed. But if you look right here, the bed comes out to right here. Um, and there's kind of a gap. And the intention with that is that whenever you're using the bed and the bed configuration, you have a place to take off your shoes. Yeah, a little mud. Yeah, yeah. without putting your feet on the actual bed. That makes sense. Yeah. 
There are some amazing things I like about this trailer. I'm gonna share it soon, but let's get to the three things I dislike. Number one, I'm gonna say, you know me, slide out kitchens. Having a kitchen that slides out without a hatch over it means anytime there's inclement weather, you're going to have to get some sort of awning. So you can't just pull over on the side of the road for a quick meal if it's raining out. When you get to the campsite, if there's any bad weather in the forecast, you have to put up that awning. You're now struggling with awnings in the wind. If it rains the day you leave, you're gonna to have to put that awning back up when you get home to dry it out so you don't get mildew. I'm not a fan of awnings. That little nice DeLorean door on the side, I would have loved to see that integrated into the back some way so you would have had a hatch, a galley hatch over that kitchen, eliminating all these issues. Number two, I've never been a big fan of converting a bed to a table. Now I know in this small camper trailer, just having that option is a great feature but it's a feature I think I wouldn't use very often. It gets so annoying doing it multiple times a day. And a trailer this small, if you think about it, all that storage areas that were shown in the walkthrough, they're taken up, they're full. And so what do you do with all that bedding during the day? There's usually nowhere to put it, so you're just moving it around to different corners, making the place look unkempt, and it's just something I don't enjoy. So I really had trouble finding a third thing that I disliked. I really like how this trailer was designed and I'll talk about that here in a bit. But if I was to nitpick it, I would say the aesthetics. To me, I love the look of it. This, what they call NASA engineered design, the cold steel, the smooth lines. It feels like a camp bunkhouse. But I get a lot of comments from my other taxa video that says they just do not like this look. I think you either love it or you hate it. And even in my own family, we're divided. I like this trailer. My wife calls it two boy. Now, number one, and you know I don't say this very often, those of you who know me well, and that's this trailer just makes sense. The guy who designed it, who sat in this trailer for hundreds if not thousands of hours, really thought about where each component should be and how that will impact the overall camping experience. I mean, a great example is look at all of our walkthrough videos. Where do they place those water jugs? Down low, right? So that means you're either bending over to get that water every time, or you have to move it and take up some other place in your galley. These guys put it up high in a nice little jerry can, and it's ergonomically correct for where you need water to be. Number two, another big one for me, this has a great open airy feel with that swing open DeLorean style door on the side and the back swinging open and the mesh. I love the feeling of a pop-up trailer and that's what this feels like to me. You hear nature, you're living in nature. That's what you came out for, but it's the best of both worlds. You swing those down and now you're insulated from that cold world and that cold environment when you're going to bed and when you're first waking up. And number three, that's future proofing your trailer. Now with the ability to expand and put a rooftop tent up there, your family can grow into this trailer, your friends can come with you. Knowing this trailer can grow with you is another thing that's hard to put a price on. If you want a similar trailer in terms of features and designs, but a bit larger, I think you'd really like the Taxa Cricket. This trailer is a bit larger and it tilts up so you can stand up in it. I'll put a walkthrough link below for you guys to see. It's a great camper if the Tiger Moth is a bit too small. If you like the design of this trailer in terms of off-road functionality, small footprint, and the ability to cook outside, then I think you'll really like the Intec Flyer Explorer because it also adds the ability to haul toys. Yes, it's a tiny toy hauler with little tip out beds so you can separate your bedding space from your toy hauling space. We have a walkthrough of that one in the description. For many of you with the ability to haul motorcycles, bikes, ATVs, side by sides, I think you're going to really like that one. Now in terms of popularity, right now square drop off-road trailers are just exploding on the market. So I'll put a link to three different walkthroughs we have below of those. Obviously, they're a great trailer because everybody's buying them. There's something definitely intriguing about them and special in the industry. And then in a more stylized design, you have the modern teardrop trailers that are designed for off-road. If you're a couple, I would point you towards an Aero teardrop trailer. Uh, we have that walkthrough in the description or a bean trailer. That's also there too. If you're a growing family, I would point you towards a Colorado teardrop. That's a larger teardrop trailer with bunks, but still a fairly low height on the uh, trailer itself, so it fits well in a garage. If I've scared you away in this video with some of the features, there's a ton of other camper walkthroughs we have on this channel, and I think there is the right fit for you out there. 
but I'd rather you go to our camping educational videos about how to have a better camping experience, the gear, the practices we use. And if you already have a camper and you're out there on the road, stay safe guys, and we'll see you in the next episode.